Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the O to V edition. This is day seven of the Costco Wine Advent Box. Let's see what the box has got for us today. Okay, so one week down, well, today is one week down, day seven. Are you keeping up? Okay, here it is, number seven. You know, you don't have to keep up. You could watch these any way, anytime you want. That's the beauty of pre-recorded or already recorded or internet or YouTube or whatever. But I think you should keep up because that's fun. Okay, we had two reds in a row, so now we've got a white. Uh, proper etiquette, Chenin Blanc from South Africa. If you watched yesterday's wine review, the North Macedonian Pinot Noir, you might think that I have a poor opinion of some of the wines from the Costco wine box, but that's not actually true. What we're doing is reductive reasoning. And what do I mean by that? Well, when I was a kid, I thought, you know, my parents said to me, you could be anything you want to be. Well, that's kind of a lot to put on a little kid because there's a lot of things you could be. So uh, one way I tried to figure out what I wanted to be was to try things and see if I liked them. And then if I didn't like them, I knew I didn't want to be that. So, for example, I learned how to weld. I worked briefly as a welder, and while I liked the physicality of the work, I liked the technicality of the work, and I liked pipe and pipe fittings, and I liked welders in general. They're a good group of people. I found that I wasn't really good enough, quick enough, easily enough, and it's a stinky, dirty job. I like welding, I like knowing how to weld, but I didn't want to become a welder, even though it's a really high paying job. And if you can do it well, well, you've got a good job for life. This wine box is sort of like that. These are inexpensive, cheap wines. And by thinking about them, instead of just drinking, we're thinking about them we are doing reductive reasoning. You're learning what mediocre or low quality wines taste like so that when you go and find a wine that is higher quality, you'll know why. Because you'll be able to say acidity, balance, complexity, finish, aroma. You'll know those concepts. And those concepts will lead you to not just a preference, but actual percep uh, perception of what quality is, because quality is a marker. You can't just look at a leather bag made by Louis Vuitton and compare that to a fake leather bag. The Louis Vuitton bag has, yes, the brand attached to it, but also it's handmade, and the leather is high quality. A cheap, machine-made, fake leather bag that's not the same thing. So what we've got are not Louis Vuitton wines. We've got low quality bulk wine. And by tasting these and thinking about them, we are going to actually learn about high quality wine because it's the opposite of a lot of these wines. Does that make sense? Doesn't mean the box is invaluable because this lesson is exactly the reason why you want to drink the Costco wine box and why you want to think about these wines in a more critical fashion rather than just as a drinking fashion. Well, if you're just drinking for the effect of drinking, vodka is a quicker uh, way to gain that same effect. Okay, let's talk about the Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc is a French grape variety. Let's have a little, slight little interesting thing about pronunciation of French words. We would call this Blanc because we would pronounce the C, but in France, generally, 
If the word doesn't end in an E, you do not pronounce the next consonant. Weird, I know, but that's how you do it. So this would be Shannon Blanc. The word for white in French is blanc, not blanc. But I'm an American, and I read things in American. And so it's Chenin Blanc to everybody else. It's Savignon Blanc instead of uh, Savignon Blanc. Savignon Blanc. Anyway, I digress. Chenin Blanc, it's from France. And in France, it's made in lots of different styles. Mostly, it's made in the Loire River Valley. And it's made slightly sweet. It's made dry. It's made as a dessert wine, and it's also made as a sparkling wine. The best examples uh, of Chenin Blanc from the Loire that you're going to find are going to be labeled under the town of Vouvray. In Vouvray, they make two different styles of Chenin Blanc. They make a semi-sweet one, and they make a dry one. The semi-sweet one will say demi-sec on it. I'll put that word here, demi-sec. Now, Chenin Blanc from South Africa is known as Steen in South Africa. I don't know why, but if you're going to a wine store and you find a Steen and it says South Africa, the grape is Chenin Blanc. However, the South Africans, knowing the commercialization process that people want to know what the grape is, they have been putting Chenin Blanc on the labels more and more often and Steen less and less often. If you are not shopping in the South Africa wine section, you should go there because there are a lot of good deals from South Africa. You can get good examples of South African Chenin Blanc for 15 bucks. You can get Pinotage, which is a signature grape variety developed hybrid in South Africa. And that is a real unctuous red grape uh, and it makes a nice, dark, smoky wine. It goes great with Thanksgiving meals. That uh, Pinotage, you can get that for maybe $20 or less. Okay, Chenin Blanc. Let's crack into this, and as I'm opening it, I'll talk about what it tastes like. Generally, when you're tasting uh, Chenin Blanc, you have a medium to full mouthfeel. It's going to be much uh, thicker feeling than, say, a Sauvignon Blanc, but it will it could be less big than an oaked Chardonnay. These are oaked wines, but they're not oaked as long, although they don't have to be oaked. Often on the label, you'll see that it'll say uh, Sir Lee. That's uh, another French word, Sir Lee. And that means that they've laid the wine on the uh, yeasts. They let the yeast, the dead yeast cells, sit in the barrel. And sometimes they stir the wine in the barrel. And that yeast, those dead yeasts, add character to the wine. That's what Sir Lee means. And Chenin Blancs often get that treatment. This is tight cork. Ah. Okay, the aromas of Chenin Blanc are floral, or it can actually smell a little bit like wet wool. If I was doing a blind taste test and I got this color and I got a medium body and I've got a little bit hints of floral and then there was a wet wool, not wet dog, that's not the smell you want, but wet wool, then I would know, aha, Chenin Blanc. But, while wet wool might sound disgusting, it actually smells nice and it is an interesting characteristic of the wine. I don't know how this South African one is going to be made, but I am hopeful that it has nice, bright, floral aromas. Okay, let's smell it. It smells clean. It smells a little bit tropical. I get hints of pineapple, maybe a little bit of peach. It smells pretty good. It's not 
intensely aromatic, but I got two different things. Pineapple, peach. Oh, of course, I'm gonna fill out my color here. It's gonna be yellow, and I'm gonna give that a medium. I think this is medium grade yellow. Okay, so aroma, mm, I'll give it an eight. It was pleasant. Now, let's taste it. I'm looking for medium full body, and I want those other fruit characteristic aromas to come through. And I don't know if the wine is going to be in a dry or slightly sweet style. Let's find out. Mm. Well, I do think there is a very, very slight hint of sweetness here. It wouldn't be considered a demi-sec. It's not like a demi-sec vouvray, but there's a slight hint of sweetness. The body is medium. The acidity is fresh or maybe even closer to smooth. It's not particularly crisp or bright, but my mouth is watering. I think the, the acidity is done nicely. I'll give it an eight. The balance, the balance is the play between the sugars, the alcohol and the acidity. There's no tannins in white wine. So, um, I don't notice the burn. The acidity is not out of balance. The sugar's slightly sweet. I think that actually it's, it's got pretty good balance. Let's, let's give it an eight. Is it perfectly balanced? So you're probably thinking he never gives nines and tens. Nine and 10 for balance is perfect harmony with varietal and style. Is it perfect harmony? It, it isn't. It's not the best, most amazing Chenin Blanc I've ever tasted. So that's why it's an eight, but it's good. It's at the top end of that good. Okay, uh, complexity. These are extra aromas. Do I get extra aromas? Do I get something new that happens in my mouth with the wine. That acidity is bright and it's making my mouth water. Are there extra aromas? No. Are there multiple distinctive flavors? No. So I'm going to give it a five. Finish and length. How long does it go? It's nice. It's pleasing. It's bright in my mouth. It's kind of a longish finish. And it added to the, it adds to the sensation. I'll give it a seven. Okay, there's my scores for our South African Sauvignon Blanc. I'm gonna go do the math. Here are my final scores for our South African Chenin Blanc, or Blanc, depending on however you want to say it. Aroma eight, acidity eight, balance eight, complexity five, finish and length seven. Total score, 36 points, add that to 50, and you get 86 points. I haven't mentioned it before, but I should. What is your score? What are you finding in your journey with the tasting chart and these wines? I had people say to me, I'm not doing it again. These wines were crummy. I, only, I, was, I thought they were gonna be 24 really super yummy, delicious wines. Well, not at 100 bucks. You're not going to get 24 little half-size bottles for 100 bucks that are super delicious wines. I know you wish it was like that, but it's just not. These are average, mediocre wines, and we'll just take them the way they give them to us. It's still valuable to think about. It's still interesting and fun to drink these, however you're coming to it, whether you're coming to it in the afternoon after work or during lunch or whatever you want. Maybe you're 
power drinking these over the weekend and trying to catch up. I don't know, but it's still a fun thing to do and it's still fun for me to make these little wine lessons. Hopefully you're uh, learning something from them. And if you are, you know, let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and I'll see you tomorrow for day number eight. Until then, I say a tutelaire and cheers.